Alrighty, our last question for this subsection. Let's dive in. A current I as a function of T flows around a circular ring in figure 11.8. Derive the general formula for the power radiated, analogous to equation uh, 60, expressing your answer in terms of the magnetic dipole moment MT of the loop. All right, let's go look at our diagram. Uh, you're definitely going to want this diagram in the back of your head at all times. I wish I had a laser pointer on the screen to help migrate or to look at this thing. But anyways, we have our loop in the XY plane. Uh, our field point is going to be somewhere in the space, which will droop over the x-axis, hence the dashed line. R comes, little r comes from the origin. Our ring has a radius b. The theta comes from the polar axis z. Our script r comes from the ring to the field point, so little r is origin to field point. Um, b here would be our prime in this case, and hence we have phi prime going in the xy plane as long as dl prime pointing tangentially on the ring the angle uh, psi comes from the fact that r now has a oblique angle to the radius b depending on where we're at in space okay so be aware of that little fact and we will do our best to make this as tidy as possible all right so um with here V is equal to zero since the ring is, quote, neutral in this uh, magnetic dipole, um, and the current depends only on T, okay, not its position. So the retarded vector potential, A, R of T, is equal to mu naught over 4 pi, closed integral, I, evaluated at the retarded time, which is T minus R, script R over C over script R, DL prime. But in this case, it does not suffice to replace uh, script R by R in the denominator. That would lead to a um, A R of T is approximately equal to mu naught over 4 pi P dot evaluated T naught over R and hence A equals 0 since P equals 0. Again, neutral because everything is adding up uh, plus or minus evenly. Um, but what we have to take into account now is that that oblique angle is going to uh, make that oblique angle of psi is going to make uh, the script R a little difficult to deal with. So what we need to use is script R is approximately equal to R times 1 minus B over uh, R times, yeah, R times 1 minus B over R sine theta cosine uh, phi prime. Okay, and if we look at our diagram, we can see how that uh, breaks everything down into the proper plane of alignment. Uh, furthermore, uh, if that came from, we use these expansions all the time. So if we have one over script R, we just flip everything and change the minus sign to plus sign. That's just the expansion on around what the uh, law of cosine and things like that gave us from our geometry. Um, again, we've seen this again uh, in the multipole expansions. So I would reference that if needed. But meanwhile, what we see here is that DL prime is just equal to some. We're at the radius, so we have B, and it goes to D phi prime pointing in the phi direction, so we're staying in the XY plane. But the phi hat direction can be broken down into X and Y coordinates. So that's where we get B, D phi prime, minus sine phi prime X hat plus cosine phi Y hat. Again, go back to your unit vector tables. We have that in the back of the book as well. Um, and what we see is that the I, again, as a function of T, we can say that this is approximately equal to I, um, where we plug in the script R approximation. Um, with that being said, you see if we uh, split up that fraction, we get an I of T minus R over C plus B over C sine theta cosine phi prime. And that, again, color coded to red, we just reduce that back down to T minus R over C is T naught. So if we expand about T naught, what we see is that we get a first order expansion. Uh, again, Taylor's expansion would be fine for this. Um, is equal to uh, one uh, I at T naught plus I dot at T naught with the BC sine theta cosine phi. Again, we need to be careful of this simply for the fact that uh, we want terms of first order so we're actually in the radiation field. Um, so approximate carefully. Carrying only the terms in the first order of B and understanding to evaluate all at T naught uh, or T at zero, 
we have a is equal to the approximation mu naught over 4 pi, 0 to 2 pi for a line integral segment. And then we have 1 over r, uh, given from the fact that we divide the current by script r. That's where that first parentheses come from. And then the current is given by the expansion, so we have i plus i dot, what we just found. And then again, since we have that dl prime that needs to be evaluated at the edge of the circle, we get b times the uh, Cartesian substitution to the phi hat direction, d phi integral, okay? So what we need to do is FOIL everything, expand out. That 1 over r gets, you know, uh, brought outside since it's a constant. So does the b from the dl. And once we expand out, we see that, again, we get rid of any higher orders of b other than first order due to the fact that we just want to ra the radiation field, okay? Uh, look at the approximation schemes that we had set up before in the notes, and we'll see we'll use that argument over and over and over again. Okay, so let's take a quick note here that over a complete cycle, sine is evaluated at the ends. That gives us zero. Cosine evaluated at a full cycle is zero, and the product of sine of cosine is zero. So everything distributed on the x evaluates to zero. Okay, that's what we distributed through when we substituted in the Cartesian uh, unit vector parts. And only the last two terms distributed with the y component because cosine squared gives us pi. Um, therefore, what we see is that we have, once we, uh, let me go back, uh, we see that we have a, uh, a sine theta cosine prime, uh, cosine squared phi prime in both of the first two terms. So, uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and, uh, you know, use what we know about our trig functions and their integrals to simplify this quickly. So, uh, the integrals evaluate to the second bracket there, which gives us zero in the x hat and pi in the y hat. We like that. Pretty easy to deal with. Um, yeah, and then cancel away as needed. You see that that pi cancels with the denominator. You see we have i dot and i, respectively. Uh, both have a sine theta, so we factor that out. Again, all in the y hat. Now let's uh, look at the case of uh, mu naught b squared over 4 r squared, r, yeah, r squared. And then i dot has an r over c plus i, which I highlighted in red, as we'll explain in a second. So in general, for points not in the xz plane, we have y hat goes to phi hat, and moreover, in the radiation zone, which is where we're interested in, since that i that's in red has that r squared with it, that does not carry the radiation. That dies out too quick. So we have to get rid of that, and all we're left with is, is the um, i dot component. And what we see is that we are, have the uh, vector potential is mu naught b squared over 4c i dot evaluated at the retarded time, or t naught, which is t minus r over c, uh, sine... Um, theta over r. Okay, so this looks pretty approximate, in my opinion, pretty close. Um, now, in order to find the fields, we just have to take the negative time derivative. Again, the vector or the scalar potential is zero, so we take the time derivative of a to find e. Good to go there. That just puts another dot on the, um, uh, the current, and again, we have a negative sign. The curl, again, I implore you to use only the fact that this uh, has a phi hat direction, so only write out the components with the phi hat and uh, derivatives that you actually know will be useful. So we have a theta derivative and an r derivative. We saw this a couple questions ago. Be very careful in your simplifying. I just, uh, you know, we've seen it a hundred times, so I just sped through the derivatives. Uh, and then that simplifies to mu naught b squared over 4c squared i double dot sine theta over r in the theta hat direction. Uh, take a quick note that it is i double dot simply because we are um, implicitly defined with an r thanks to being evaluated at t naught. Um, so yeah, now that we can, f now that we have e and b, we can quickly find the uh, s field, which is just a cross product of the two. As you see, a lot of them have similar overlaps um, with respect to what is a constant. Both have mu naught b squared over four c that we need to worry about. Um, so we have another factor of one over C that is on the one over mu naught from the original formulation of S. Um, and then yeah, we just have negative phi hat cross theta hat, which puts us into R hat, okay? So if we're trying to find the power, we just need uh, 
P is equal to S dot DA. We don't have any uh, time averaging to do here, so that's nice. Um, most of the stuff is a constant. I tag team the colors so we can get done with it quickly. The D phi integral gives us a factor of 2 pi, as always. The sine cubed gives us a 4 over 3. And we see that once we have that, we can uh, clarify things nicely. Or clarify. We can uh, put things together nicely. We have to force a factor of pi in there, so that's why we multiply by 1 in the form of pi over pi. And we do this to where we can have a uh, time derivative of the magnetic dipole, which is the area, hence pi, uh, pi um, uh, times b squared, okay? Uh, that's a circle area, and then we have the uh, times the current. So as you see, we just force that to work by multiplying by pi over pi, and we are indeed left with mu naught m double dot squared over 6 pi c cubed. So we're good to go there.